After countless tests with Nano Banana Pro, I pause for a second and ask myself, where should I actually create those images? In Google Gemini 3's chat, Google AI Studio, with Flow or through an external platform using the API? And more importantly, does it make a difference? That's exactly what I want to show you today. You might think, why should I care which platform runs Nano Banana Pro? I press a button and the result should always be the same, right? But is that really true? I asked Gemini 3 for a bit of clarity and it gave me this chart. Think of Google AI as a restaurant. The kitchen in the middle is the model itself. Gemini on the left is the dining hall. You just order and enjoy. Upstairs, developers use AI Studio as a lab to invent new recipes. The APIs on the right are just a delivery service for apps. But the real secret is Flow, the VIP table inside the kitchen, where you tell the chef exactly how to cook your meal. There's actually a lot packed into this metaphor. If you want the prompts I used to generate it, just drop a comment. The full text is too long for the description. And no, you don't need to sign up for a newsletter or anything like that. If you want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or share it. That helps me create more content like this. Thanks a lot. Since the real focus here is the platform comparison, I'll start by showing you a few results. If you're curious how the four approaches in the diagram actually work, including settings, speed, resolution, and output time, I'll cover that at the end of this tutorial. But first, the test. I asked Gemini 3 to think in every possible direction and deliver prompts at different levels of complexity. From ultra short to ultra long, from super basic to highly abstract. What you're seeing are 30 different cases. I tried everything. A simple dot symbol, conflicting physical states, text, reflections, inverted logic, even schematic diagrams. Don't worry, I'll just show you nine examples that best represent the different output qualities across the platforms. After all, the goal is to figure out which method gives the best results. To rate the outcomes, I asked external sources to judge the images without knowing which platform generated what. The questions were simple. Which one has the best overall aesthetic and which one follows the prompt most precisely? Example one, the recursive reflection and logic challenge. This one pushes spatial reasoning and the physics of light the model has to understand that a reflection inside a reflection gets smaller and flips. On top of that, there's a logic puzzle embedded in the scene. Winner in both categories, aesthetic and prompt accuracy, is Google Gemini, bottom left. Example two, the multilingual neon rain challenge, a brutal stress test for text rendering. It combines complex scripts, Korean, Arabic, English cursive, as actual light sources in a rainy, reflective environment. Final verdict, close match, but the API version, top right, wins in both categories. Example three, the conceptual cause and effect challenge. You don't describe what's happening, you describe what already happened. The model has to infer and visualize the cause. Gemini, bottom left, wins in aesthetic quality. The API version, top right, has the most accurate prompt execution. Example four, the warped text and materiality challenge, text placed on curved, translucent, melting surfaces, refraction, distortion, physical layering, all in one prompt. Winner in both categories, the API version, top right. Example five, the technical precision challenge. This checks if the model understands camera terms like depth of field, and whether it applies real physics instead of fake bokeh. Gemini, bottom left, takes the lead in both aesthetics and prompt accuracy. Example six, the real-time data visualization challenge. This tests whether the model is grounded in real-world logic. Can it turn abstract concepts into something you'd actually recognize? Winner in both categories. Google Flow, top left. Example seven, the lighting contradiction challenge. The prompt demands a white shadow. The model has to break its own understanding of physics and follow your command. In both categories, Gemini, bottom left, comes out ahead. Example eight, the negative space and volumetric physics challenge. 
render a figure entirely through smoke displacement inside a chaotic firestorm, matter defined by absence. Gemini, bottom left, wins again. Best look, best execution. Example 9. The undefined object challenge. No guidance, almost no data. The model has to hallucinate its default bias. What does it create when you say almost nothing? Once again, Gemini, bottom left, is the clear winner. When you compare the results, the first thing you notice is how wildly the downloadable image resolutions vary. Some platforms offer no settings at all. Others let you tweak everything. Pricing ranges from included in your subscription to pay per run. But what matters most, at least to me as a designer, is image quality and how closely the result follows the prompt. According to external ratings, here's the outcome. Google Gemini is the clear overall winner with 5.5 points. Especially strong in atmosphere, layered logic, mirror in mirror, invisible figures, and cinematic lighting. The API version scores 2.5 points, a production workhorse, great at text rendering, and physical textures like ice, neon, and glass. Google Flow gets one point. The Illustrator, strong in clean vector style and graphic layouts like the coffee cycle, but weaker in photorealism. Personally, I'd add three more points from a designer's perspective. Two extra points to the API version for offering multiple aspect ratios and 4K resolution. And one point to Google Flow for its built-in editor. So in the context of Nano Banana Pro, you could say, Google Gemini is the idea machine. Great for brainstorming, mood boards, complex concepts and storytelling. The API version is the production workhorse. Perfect for final assets, web and print, material simulations and typography. Google Flow is the illustrator, best for icons, quick fixes, stylized illustrations. Of course, there's some overlap between them, but this gives you a rough orientation. And are the higher costs of the API version justified? In my view, yes, it's the only way to get real 4K output. Now for a quick look at the four different options I've tested or considered. Let's start with Google AI Studio. I'll keep it short. This is the screen you see as a regular user, even with a paid Google One subscription like mine. The first question is, do you have an API key? Which means no, you can't use this with just your pro plan. You'll need to set up billing and configure an API. Even Gemini 3 itself says, only go to AI Studio if you're building an app or need advanced parameters not available in the regular chat. My answer? No thanks, that's too complex. I'll stick with the simpler routes. Which brings us to Google Gemini 3, the chat version. And yes, this really is the simplest option. Here are a few key facts. You can only create one image at a time. There are no settings to adjust. The resolution is fixed at 2,752 by 1,536 pixels. And yes, the image comes with a watermark. It takes about 25 seconds to generate and the download's a bit sluggish. Do you need any prior knowledge? You'll need a mouse and a browser. That's it. Just open the platform, switch to Thinking with 3 Pro Mode in the bottom right corner, click the Tools icon and select Create Images. If you just want to create an image, enter your prompt and hit Submit. If you want to edit an image, upload it first using the plus icon, then add your prompt and click Submit. One thing I've noticed Image edits tend to lower the overall quality slightly, especially when text is involved. Now let's move on to the Flow platform. What Gemini 3 calls the VIP table for generative AI in both image and video creation. Head over to labs.google, click twice on Create with Flow, and then hit the button at the bottom center to start a new project. On the left, you'll see several creation options. Three of them are for video, the fourth one is create image. That's the one we're using. On the right side, there's a settings icon. Click it and you can switch between landscape and portrait formats. You can also choose how many images to generate, anywhere from one to four. The resolution is a bit odd. If you download an image directly, 
it's 1595 by 890 pixels, but if you use the download option from the overview page, you only get 1376 by 768. The images come without watermarks. Generation speed is around 20 seconds, and the download is instant. The nice thing about Flow is its built in editor. Click on an image, and you'll see all the available tools appear at the top. There's a selection mode where you mark areas to work on, and a drawing mode for precise edits. On the far left is the paintbrush tool. You can manually sketch over anything you want to change. If painting's not your thing, just grab the arrow and point. The arrowhead follows your cursor. There's also a rectangle tool to mark larger areas. Want to add text? Use the text icon. You can assign different colors to every element, and you can move them freely around the canvas. If you want to reset everything, just click undo a few times. And if you go too far back, use redo to move forward again. Once you've added all your wishes, enter your prompt below and press generate. The fourth option is using external platforms like Replicate, OpenArt, or FAL via API. Each one has integrated Nano Banana Pro a little differently. For me, the easiest and most transparent solution is FAL AI. FAL offers two separate models, Nano Banana Pro for text to image and Nano Banana Pro Edit for image to image. If you choose text to image, you'll land on this interface. Prompt goes in at the top left. Below that, you can pick from a wide range of aspect ratios. For resolution, you've got options, 1K, 2K or 4K. Want more than one image? Just raise the number, up to four. If you switch to the image to image editor, the interface looks slightly different, but the core functions are the same. Always check the cost shown at the bottom right before you run. Then click run and that's it. The images are watermark free. At 4K rendering takes around 64 seconds. And before I forget, yes, there are more ways to use Nano Banana Pro. Through Adobe tools like Generative Fill, through Google Anti-Gravity or Vertex AI. Wherever you use it, Nano Banana Pro is a powerhouse. For graphics, design and photography, it makes everything easier, sharper and faster. Use it. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.